Ururu and her son, Bubake, prepare for the Festival of the Senses. Everything is ready for them to fly high. To start, this 80-plus-year-old woman removes the jewelry which pierces her nose so that she can sniff more and better. With the help of a reed, Pugapia lifts a vegetable drug to the nostrils of her husband. This snuff from the Anjiko or Yopo tree is used on few occasions and is highly hallucinogenic. This is a social drug. Everyone takes part in its consumption, but without frivolity. Our camera has captured the seriousness of their faces. Safely united, this morning they seek out another dimension, another sensory territory to make them less vulnerable in the face of the cruel reality which grips them. The drug takes effect immediately and loosens the mind and the tongue of this wounded woman. Fifteen years ago, when she returned home from hunting with her brother, she found their village filled with corpses. Dozens of Kanue had been murdered by the timbermen. The exorcism begins. Tiramantu is going to clean the bad blood of each and every one of those present. This ritual is one of the most meaningfully suggestive anthropological documents we have ever seen. Before disaster came, this woman was her people's shaman, the transmitter of an electrical energy all of the Amazon tribes take from the earth. Today, after years of silence, she acts and works for her friends, once her enemies, the Akuntsu. One by one, she moves over their vital organs to repair them, to make them strong to face what is bearing down upon them. Although it may seem strange to us, this is pure culture, a sacred act in the religious temple of the jungles along the Omede River. The son, little Oberaika, takes part in the ritual with his mother. From his point of view, he's more interested in the magic, in the touch of this hallucinating grandma. Wasted land hurts this morning more than ever, and these people cry for it, like good children for their mother. <laughs> 